Hi, I'm Robert from Manhattan Wood Project, and this is my X-Carve. I wanted to make a video on how to do a modification that I did to stiffen up the X-axis. It's not necessary if you're using a stock spindle on soft materials like woods, but if you're adding a router or you plan to make precision cuts in hard materials like metal, you may want to consider doing this modification. It'll help to minimize chatter in the middle, and it could help you keep from breaking bits. It only took a couple hours to do, and it can be done with a drill press or even a hand drill. I'd recommend taking the steel to a machine shop to get cut, but you can cut it to size using an angle grinder or even a hacksaw, if you hate yourself enough. I modified some directions that I found on Inventables, which were very well written by Charlie Thomas. I'll put a link to his directions in the description of this video, and I'll also put a list of the materials and tools needed for it at the end of this video. What should I make today? Manhattan Wood Project. That looks great! Down between the pieces of maker slide here, there's a gap. Well, it's been commonly noted that when this is centered in the middle, especially with the heavy spindle, there's enough of a bow that you have a hard time uh, taking cuts on aluminum without breaking bits. Well, one way to stiffen that up is to get a piece of 3 16 inch steel. So I got this piece from Home Depot. I'm going to have to cut it shorter and I'm cut maybe three quarters to one inch off of it. But you take it, you cut it to size, you slip it in here, going all the way through, all the way underneath here. You drill some holes through the maker slide and through this, and then you hold the whole thing together using a furniture nut and bolt. This is a low enough profile that it will suck it together and it won't stick out and get caught by any of the screws. Using a piece of 3 16 inch steel, I cut it to 36 inches long and 2 and a half inches tall. That leaves it flush with the top of my maker slides and leaves about 7 eighths of an inch sticking out underneath that won't interfere with the X carriage, the spindle, or project material. I didn't record it, but after cutting the steel, I applied a thin coat of Rust-Oleum gloss black paint to it to prevent corrosion and to make it look nice. It's also a good idea to mark which maker slide is the front, which one's the back, and which side of the steel is going to face the front. You can do this with a pencil and it'll come right off if you want to take it off. You can use any number of bolts to hold the steel in place. I chose to use five, so I marked my holes starting in the middle and then put them about every six and a half inches apart. I centered the holes half inch above the lip on the bottom of the maker slide to prevent interference with the upper slot. After marking the holes, I used a punch to make a small indentation in the maker slide to give the drill bit somewhere to start drilling. I started drilling on the back side of the rear maker slide using a quarter inch metal cutting bit. I applied a lot of WD-40 while I was drilling. After drilling out the rear maker slide, I clamped both maker slides together and drilled the front maker slide out using the rear as a template. After I drilled the first hole, I put quarter inch dowels in and was able to drill the rest of the holes without clamps. After drilling holes through the front maker slide, I drilled out the holes in the rear maker slide using a 13 30 seconds inch drill bit. These holes need to be slightly larger since the furniture nut has a larger diameter than the furniture bolt. I didn't record it, but I filed the edges of the holes on the inner and outer edges of the maker slide to remove burrs that could get between parts. With the maker slides drilled, I reinstalled them and put the 3 16 inch steel in between them, with the top flush to the top of the maker slides. Then I clamped the maker slides together and used a punch to mark where I needed to drill for the steel. Then I removed the steel and made some larger indentations using the punch to give the drill bit somewhere to start drilling. This is a very important step when drilling into metals, especially into hard metals like steel. With the holes marked, I flooded the steel around the hole with WD-40 and drilled a hole using a 9 inch bit. This bit is slightly larger than necessary, which allows a little more slop for alignment. If you account for slop, you tend to have to redo a lot less work because of fractional misalignments. After drilling the steel, I used a much larger half inch bit to drill a slight countersink, which worked to deburr the steel. I could have used a hand file, but this was quicker. 
Since the tolerances between the maker slides are so small, you don't want to cause potential problems by having a small piece of metal sticking out between them. I picked up the furniture bolts from Lowe's and had the choice between too short and too long. I used a hacksaw to cut the bolt down to about 1 and 7 16 inches, but you can also use a Dremel type tool or a grinder. One good way to cut bolts is to put two nuts on the bolt and then cut between them. This leaves a nut on that will clean up the threads as you take it off. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right nuts in my shop at that point. After cutting the bolt to length, I used a small file to clean up the threads on the end, just enough to get the nut on. Now the work is nearly done. It's time to put everything together. I installed the front maker slide, loosely installed the rear maker slide, and clamped the steel between them. I made sure the steel was level with the top of the maker slide, and that the maker slides were level with each other. Then I added a couple drops of thread lock to the furniture nut, and loosely threaded each nut and bolt together. I had designed it so the furniture nut went in the back, just so I wouldn't see the shiny cut end of the bolt during regular operation. After getting all five bolts and nuts installed, I double checked everything was level and flat, and tightened down on them with a lot of force. Then I removed the bolts connecting the maker slide to the Y plates one at a time, added a drop of thread lock, and reinstalled them. My final check was the dummy check, making sure the X carriage clears the steel. As you can see, the X carriage moves just fine, the gantry moves just fine, and the steel doesn't interfere with anything. To do this modification, you'll need the following materials. 3 16 inch steel, 36 inches long, 2 and a half inches tall. Gloss black spray paint, I used Rust-Oleum. WD-40, or some other oil to use while you're drilling. Furniture nuts and bolts. Lowe's item numbers 148248 and 148284. You'll also need the following tools, or the hand tool equivalents. An angle grinder to cut the steel, or a hacksaw. A drill press, or a hand drill. A small round or semi-round file. Four drill bits for cutting metal. One quarter inch, nine thirty seconds of an inch, thirteen thirty seconds of an inch, and one half inch. Hand clamps. 4 and 5 millimeter Allen wrenches, a Dremel type tool, or a hacksaw, thread locking compound. I want to give a big thank you to Charlie Thomas for writing up the initial procedure for this, and to Inventables for making a product that's so useful, yet so easily configured by individual users. It's a great piece of engineering, and I look forward to many years of playtime with it. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, or if you like my channel, Please consider subscribing. You can hit the big subscribe channel below or hit my little logo up here. Also, please consider subscribing to my upcycling channel, Round Trip Upcycling. You can just click on the logo right up here.